This tutorial is sponsored by the 3D Coloring Book, a project specifically designed to help empower artists who are struggling with texturing in Substance Painter and to help show you that anyone can create beautiful pieces of art with just a little bit of practice and guidance. To instantly gain access to hundreds of pre-made professional level models and hours of high quality tutorials, click the link in the description and begin your journey today. Recently, I made this artwork to practice my stylized texturing without hand painted or high poly paint. I use Substance Painter to texturing and Unreal Engine to render the final image. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how I made this stylized sushi. So the first thing that I did was look for a real photos and interesting stylized sushi. For stylized reference, I used Jasmine's artwork. I like how she textured the salmon, simplified the detail, and made it looks really good and delicious. And later, I will show you how I analyze really quickly this artwork and apply what I've learned from it to my texture. After that, I started modeling with a simple box and duplicated, modified a bit, one for salmon and one for sushi. Then I used mud tool on those models. I don't really need high poly here, I just want something simple because my focus is only to experiment with texture. Initially, I just wanted to texture sushi, but later I found out that the result is quite good and then I created one set of sushi with ikura, wasabi, bowl, and even the wooden sushi board. There are no special things here, only simple models. For wooden bowl, I bevel the edges and make the edges a bit uneven to make it looks interesting and later this wooden board will be modified again once the texture are complete then i unwrap everything and set them like this i only use two texture pages one for the wooden board another for the foot i put the overlap uvs outside from the uv area this big empty space was from the top of the rice mesh but because I used tessellation, the top surface overlap with the salmon, so then I remove it. When exporting, it is the best to keep the model separated from each other. But when I create this, I didn't separate all of them, and this caused an AO issue, and I had to bake them again. In Substance Painter, I began with initial preparation by baking the mesh like usual, with all maps checked except for ID and bake all texture sets. I changed the environment map with Studio 3 to get a better lighting that I like. I also enabled tessellation and using high as a source and with maximum subdivision. Before I texture it, I look back on my stylized reference by Jasmine and analyze how she made this salmon look good. The first thing that I notice here is the brass lines on the red surface or red muscle. Because it's hand painted, if you look in real photo, there should be fibers on the surface, but it got blurred on painting. The second thing is the big white lines or white muscles, and sometimes it's a bit wavy. The next thing is Jasmine added a fake highlight on the salmon surface. It's like dots on the edge, and it's a bit stretched. The last thing is the surface is in flat color. It has darker and lighter color variation on every surface. So these are four main points that I want to apply to my textures. So here back in Substance Painter, what I did was pretty simple. On every texture, I created a group and used a fill layer as a base with only color, high, and roughness channels. Then I added black mouse and used polygon fill to select the mesh that I want to texture. Then add fill and use grunges or procedural texture to get the effect that I want to create. 
So that's the basic technique of how I did texture my model. And here I want to show you how I created my texture. This is the base that I use. And then I added a new fill layer with anisotropic noise. And you can get that here. This is the parameter. To easy adjust that texture, I went to 2D view and modified and rotate from there. Then I added blur slope. I use this filter a lot along with warp. These are really helpful filters to achieve imperfection looks. Usually, I use small values and adjust it to get a subtle effect. For the blending mode, I use value just to make it darker or lighter without changing the color. The next layer is only duplicated layer with different settings, minus high and just offset the texture to get some variation. And then blur slope and blur again. Then I added anchor point. This anchor point is used to get texture information in the layer below. It really useful to help us in making detail especially when we don't have high poly bake. So, I use smart mask dirt cavities almost all the times, and then I change the micro height to anchor point from previous layer. What we want to do here is to turn on micro height and adjust the parameter as we like. You can use any smart mask as you want and use anchor point to make detail. Then I use blur slope again. The next is another fiber using Grunge Map 5, and you can get that here. Then I inverted, adjusted the parameter and rotated. The next thing is white muscle. Like in my reference, it has various lines, and I've tried many procedurals and I found using Grunge Damas is good to achieve that look. I can adjust the division distortion as I like. After that, I added warp and anchor point to reference that texture. Then, I created another fill layer with smart mask. We can use any mask to get the edge effect. And there are no special settings here. Then, another edge using the anchor point from white muscle. Then, I put anisotropic noise to subtract the edge effect below, like this, and blur slope. This layer is more or less the same. Another layer is just edge highlight with blur slope without micro high. Then I want to get a dot highlight like this. So what I did was I used directional scratches with these settings and adjust it so it looks like a circle. And I use smart mask to subtract. You can use any smart mask as long as it can highlight on the edge. Then invert it, change blending mode to subtract. Then add a blur slope to stretch it a bit. And for the rise texture, it is more or less the same. I use mesh 2 and adjust it. Another layer is the same mesh 2 with a different position. And use lighten mode. Then add fluid to fill it. You can find it here, and also using lighten. Then add warp and high pass. Another texture is also like that. As you can see here, this is how I created my texture using a fill layer, put a black mask, and begin to add detail using any texture, and also play with the blending mode. The next thing is the wooden board. At first, I was creating a stone plane, but I'm not really satisfied with the result, so I made wood materials using Grunge Map 5 in here and use anchor points.
Light area took anchor points from wood fibers. Another edge. With all layers off, I use smart mask, bevel it, blur directional, guys and noise to subtract, blur slope and directional blur. Edge tree highlight is also the same. And the strips, this is using strips from procedurals and put another strips to subtract. Remove another strips with paint, blur slope, and warp. We can also adjust the high. The edge is also the same. The next is the sign, which is actually inspired from her artwork. Not really necessary, but I like to put something there. The wooden bowl is also with the same technique. And this, this is a soy sauce. This is inspired from anime. It's something like this. And what I did was make texture with directional scratches, put polygon, and subtract. Bevel it, put geyser noise to subtract in some area, and blur slope. For the black fake shadow, like this, I only use polygon too, and move it with the transform tool. The last is the water effects. It takes the anchor point from the layer below. I don't need the color information here, I just need the anchor point there and adjust the parameters. And once I'm happy, I put blur, bevel, and blur slope effect. So that's basically how I made my texture. After I got my texture completed, the next thing that I did was to modify my model based on the texture that I have made. And this is the final model. So here we are in Unreal Engine. I have real-time ray tracing enabled, and it's really useful to get a nice lighting without needing to bake global illumination, shadow, or worry about UV2 for light map. I just imported the model and put it into the scene. I use HDRI backdrop as a base lighting. This plugin needs to be enabled first in the plugins window and restart the engine to use it. I use this interior HDRI for my scene. This HDRI can be downloaded for free in HDRI Heaven. I use this Royal Esplanade. And then I created three base materials and made material instance from this. The first one is the basic material. In the inside of this material is actually just basic stuff, such as albedo, surface, and normal. I use param 2D for the texture node, so later in material instance, I can change to any texture. I put vector 3 here to adjust the texture color and added a parameter, so I have more control of the texture to have lighter or darker value. And even though this object isn't metal, I still put a parameter to adjust the metalness so I can make the object look more shiny. Then I use Fresnel to get a fake rim like effect and connect that to emissive color. So everything inside here is the same. The only difference is that I made tessellation nodes and use a high map from a substance painter and plug them to word displacement and tessellation multiplier. And in material settings, I change the tessellation mode to PN triangles and check crack free displacement. For the transparent materials, it's really simple, only using albedo, emissive color, and opacity. This material is used for Ikura, the little spear on the top of the sushi. So when I exported this model, I assign different materials on every ingredient of the sushi. It will use the same texture, but in Unreal Engine, I put different material instances and change the parameters to get a different effect. And here is the example of how I made my material instance and changed the parameters. For the rice, I tried to make it look similar to anime in which the color is almost flat. 
but there's still a displacement there a bit. For this bubble, or ikura, as you can see, I have more control to change the opacity, the edge of the object, and tweak it more until I get the result that I like. So that's the demo of how I set up my model, and here, I already have all the objects imported separately and have been assigned with material instances that I created. And now, I want to show you how I set up my scene and lighting. I prepared the light source first, by changing the color and the intensity of it. Then, I created a fixed camera for the preview and also for the final image later. Then, I started to decorate my scene by putting every asset that I have here. And for the small assets, I scattered them using foliage tool and painted them. It takes half an hour or even more to decorate this, so here, I'll just show you the final scene. And that's it! That's how I made this stylized sushi. Hopefully, this gives you some perspective on creating stylized art. And sorry if I didn't explain it really well, but I hope you understand the process. If you have any question, just leave in the comment section below, or contact me on my art station or Instagram. So yeah, thanks for watching.